Hello everyone, Aidlo here with another update. As I promised in my last video, I wrapped up uh, working on the theming extension for SQL UI and uh, I completed all of the remaining widgets and uh, wrote an extensive documentation that you can see on the screen here. It's long, so it co covers all of the functionality that currently exists and not, all, not the widgets themselves because that's uh, uh, that would be too much to um, explain all of the widgets themselves. Um, but they are uh, easily available uh, for anybody that's working on the code. So I don't, I'm not that worried about that. But for the, the other part, how everything works and how it should be extended or how you should apply to your own use cases to it, it's explained here. And uh, once I completed the documentation, of course, I merged it to main. So the repository now has the uh, theming as the main version. Afterwards, I worked with the community, uh, the Bevy community a bit uh, to upgrade the SQL UI to the upcoming uh, release of Bevy. So the 014. Um, I have also completed this one. We fixed some uh, blocking issues uh, and those should be available with the with the new release. Along with that, I incorporated the latest edition of the uh, border uh, radius, um, so the corners, the rounded corners, to the widget library. So wherever it makes sense, it's actually in use. I have also added support for the outlines and the texture atlases. The texture atlas is a bit basic, uh, but it does what you what it's supposed to do, and I'm going to show you an example right off the bat. Um, so that completes all of the uh, built-in styling functionality. So the built-in as in what Bevy currently supports, um, SQL UI now also supports out of the box. If you don't have something, you can still use the custom um, extensions in all of the areas where it makes sense. So you can define your custom attributes with callbacks as before. But everything that Bevy um, provides should be covered now. You may have also noticed that I've replaced the colors, so it looks much better now than in the previous um, iteration. And to bring it up and have a look at how it looks like, so this is the their most recent version. And I will merge this once the 014 is actually released. It's currently a release candidate. Uh, it should be released in, in a couple of days, I believe. And once that's done, I will uh, push another update to uh, make this the de facto main version. And I am also going to do a release on Crates IO, so you don't have to depend on the repository anymore. Um, so uh, what we see here is uh, the new color scheme and uh, um, layout. It looks much nicer. It, the rounded borders really help out in, in a number of ways. Um, and the light theming version is now also much more eye-pleasing than it was before. Um, it's still a bit empty. I mean, it's it's test content, but it works. I think it's uh, uh, once it's filled with actual uh, work content, it will look uh, really nice. Um, but back to what I was talking about. So uh, here you can, uh, so the rounded borders you can see everywhere. It's well, everywhere where YouTube compression will allow it. But in, for instance, in these buttons, you have a little uh, rounded corners. Uh, the drop downs have the rounded corners where they are, you know, uh, overflowing. So those are there. Um, the radio buttons and the sliders are also using rounded corners to actually have the visual um, circle and not a, an, an icon anymore. And uh, for the outline, I have an example here that uh, shows how the outline is supported. You can animate the individual properties of the outline or the whole outline together. And uh, this uh, little flower here is actually an example for using the texture atlas uh, for animation. As you can see, it has a, an idle animation. And if I hover over it, it changes uh, slightly. If I press, changes even more and I can just cancel the uh, the interaction to show the last uh, 
frame, the last couple frames of the animation. And then it goes back. It, this is, of course, it's a silly example, um, but uh, um, I can imagine that uh, this is useful when you have a purely 2D uh, game where you uh, want to have interactions such as this. Uh, this feature might get updates later on um, because for now it's just a simple uh, integer animation. I will show you in a, in a minute. Um, but I imagine that this should be like more sophisticated in, in the sense that you would want to define ranges in the texture atlas that uh, belongs to one animation and then uh, blend between uh, two animations in a different manner and not just you know scrubbing to the keyframes. Um, and just, just to show you how uh, the texture atlas is animated as you can uh, see here here is the texture atlas and it's actually the index of the atlas that's being animated um, and you can see that it's it's a simple integer so all of the frames are in the uh, same picture um, and we just you know go from one to the other uh, in, a, in a linear, linear uh, manner and I have also added the new image source, the atlas, so you can just define um, by the path and the layout um, and styled uh, <laughs> as an image, basically. So practically, you uh, should be able to replace it per interaction as well. So if I were to take an interactive image, which should be a interactive wells and then you could add the image source here and basically when you hover over we could replace the atlas itself with something else uh, but it, it it will be a bit uh, difficult to synchronize with the animations uh, with the right keyframes i mean uh, because those are actually um, you know, going in between each other and uh, they don't consider that you swapped an atlas. Uh, so that's a bit of a difficulty um, at the moment, but I have no real world use cases for it. So I have no idea how uh, do, to how best uh, uh, do that. Um, I imagine that instead of a, a numeric thing, you, you could also have like a, an image source here. And then just add your atlas here, along with the the the, the keyframes that should be considered for this state, you know. So, um, but that's that rem remains to be seen. So, if anybody has a, a, a an idea of what it should be, um, we can talk about that later. In any case, I don't really have anything else for the moment. So, once Bevy uh, does the release. I will update um, Sika UI and we'll do a release on Crates.io so you should be able to just grab it as a dependency directly from there instead of relying on the GitHub um, source and uh, I'm going to go back to working on text uh, but I'm also going to, to take some uh, vacations for the next couple of weeks so uh, progress will be limited um, in any case I will post an update once I'm back and hopefully I will have actual progress uh, in, in to show or talk about. Otherwise, I will um, just, you know, not create a video. But for now, I will continue. Until the next update, you have fun. Ciao, ciao.